1607, the year the colonists established the first colony in the Americas, and with them came many tools to help protect, build, and expand the newfound territory, including the early firearm. The gun culture in the United States has been seen as a divide that has no middle ground, between self-defense and the potential to harm others. The common ground between them both is that both parties feel the need to feel safe, just in different ways. The United States has the highest mass shooting rate in the world, but does not lead in firearm homicides. For a population of 100,000 people, for example, there are 4.5 firearm homicides. You are five times more likely to die from being beaten than by a firearm. Out of Texas, where there has been a church shooting. He was shooting everybody, and there was dead people everywhere. A breaking news, a report from Los Angeles of a multiple shooting a deadly mass shooting. The ninth fatal school shooting so far this year. Mass shooting. This mass shooting that left 58 people dead, another 869 hurt. Outside of the mass shooting I was involved in, that changed things for me a little bit, but only because it brought it into my personal world, where mm -hmm. it still, as an adult, has not been part of my life. OK. Um, do you think there are any measures that the government could have taken that could have prevented the Las Vegas massacre? Well, that's a really tough question. Mm -hmm. I think with that one in particular and a lot of these mass shootings, the people are not on the on radar yet. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure what the government could have done. Uh, the specific mass shooting I was involved in, he did pass all the background checks but he was allowed to buy a whole lot of semi-automatic weapons. So I think that could have been changed. I understand that some people choose to have those for recreation, mm -hmm. but his intent was not for recreation, and a lot of people's intent is not for recreation. So limiting the number of guns that guy had that night would have been better for all of us. I think less people would have been shot. Mm -hmm. There have been 158 mass shootings since 1966 in which four or more people were killed or injured. On October 1st, 2017, shooter Stephen Paddock opened fire on a crowd of unsuspecting viewers of a country music festival. After about 11 minutes, the shooter killed himself. In total, 58 people died and 851 were injured. Out of the perpetrators of mass shootings, most of them were actually legal gun owners. Crime rates in different countries compared to the United States of America are both negatively and positively affected by gun control regulations. Culturally, I've been conditioned to consider guns as a weapon of death, as a weapon that was designed first and foremost to kill human beings, as a weapon of war, as an increasingly dangerous and destructive weapon um, that is best handled by those with the correct training, the correct authority, and typically, where I'm from, that being law enforcement and the military. Uh, what reasons created the current gun laws? Uh, the current gun laws in Australia, which are very strict by comparison to um, America's standards, were precipitated by a horrific massacre that we had in 1996. The perpetrator was a psychotically deranged person by the name of Martin Bryant, and he went into a beautiful uh, tourist attraction in Australia called Port Arthur, a convict settlement from 200 years ago. And he took semi-automatic weapons, um, massacred a disturbing amount of people in a restaurant who were just there with their families having a nice, nice day out. He um, set fire to a house, massacred all the residents in there, and also tracked down and killed a couple of uh, infant uh, young girls and caught them behind a tree and massacred them as well, in total killing 35 people. So within two weeks of that, Australia was horrified, shocked, it just wasn't part of our consciousness. Our government had moved to restrict and ban the sale of um, semi-automatic weapons, except to those um, in law enforcement and the military, and initiated what was called the Gun Buyback Program, where I think about 650,000 weapons were bought back by the government, voluntarily surrendered at police stations, and they were given market value for it. So since then, we have not had a single mass shooting, 1996. So that's, that's the origin, the historical origin of our gun laws. 
Depression and anxiety, in many cases, are known to be the cause of dangerous and harmful behavior. People with schizophrenia or bipolar disorder are at a high risk of committing a violent crime. The high rates of mental health issues in the United States, along with the wide availability of firearms, causes rising issues with mental illness. From 1982 to 2018, 70% of firearms used in mass shootings were legally obtained. This is a concern for those who worry about their safety in their homes, schools, concerts, and other public areas as well. Many concerns of the current gun laws is how easily obtainable a semi-automatic rifle is, especially to those who are currently being institutionalized, until completed. Which is why Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz was able to obtain the AR-15 he used in the shooting. From the majority of history, mental health appears to be the issue with incidents and crimes committed. Both sides of the debate will dispute sides on gun control, either leaning towards the firearm being responsible or the criminal being responsible. The middle ground can be found in mental health of all citizens and their accessibility to potentially harmful tools. So, is there a middle ground? The sides of the gun control debate stereotypically never agree on anything. But people on both sides actually seem to have a common ground that they don't acknowledge. In the end, it is impossible to solve the problem of gun violence due to the gun culture in the United States. But until we solve the problem fully, there is the divide.